Hey everybody, it's Monster Art School again. Hopefully you're all out there. And I'm putting the sign sideways. It's Monster Art School with Steve and Luna. And uh, this is yesterday's dragon. This is dragon week. So that's yesterday's dragon. We did a space dragon. And today we're going to do a zburator. Now you might wonder what a zburator is, right? Zbura. Well. It's Zburator, Zburator. It's a uh, Romanian dragon, spirit dragon. And sometimes they appear as, believe it or not, they appear as people. But sometimes. their main form is a dragon Hello, Kimberly. Hello. that is part Hello, wolf and part dragon. It is a wolf with a flaming tail. And, a, dra and a, uh, a dragon with a flaming tail and a wolf head. And fire and breath. Fire breath and stuff like that. So what type that's what we're going to do. What type is Hi. And you know what? If, if you guys can share this or do watch parties, it would be really great. Because that way we can get more people to watch Monster Art School. So a watch party is just a way of watching something online. So if you can do that. Luna is sharpening the pencils. So today, we need to draw a wolf. Wolves are not easy to draw. We've done wolves before, but wolves are not easy to draw. And the reason they're not easy to draw, I find, is their heads are shaped differently. They're kind of shaped like a, they kind of have an interesting angle to their heads. Um, Luna and I were talking about this earlier today. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a wolf form, and then we're going to go to a dragon form Hi, from there. Hi, Penelope and Harry. Is, hi, everybody. How are you doing? Well, that's not Harry. Well, I don't think Harry's on. I think it's just Penelope. Oh, yeah. I could be wrong. How do I know? Because um, I don't think Harry does these. I think Harry is working. So yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to start with... Are you going to draw along with us, or are you going to make up your own drawing? I think... Okay. Well, I'm not going to draw along the rules, but I'm going right. to do basic well, stuff. Well, okay. So... Sometimes Luna joins us. With another circle. Hi, Camille. No, nope, I'm not starting with a circle. Ha ha. Ha ha. Make it fun of you. No. Um, triangle. I'm going to start with a giant triangle again, like we did yesterday. Okay. And we're going to bring that triangle down. You can curve it in if you want. It doesn't have to be an exact triangle. And you don't need to connect them. But that's going to be where we're going to put our wings, like we did yesterday. And then right about here... The wings inside the inside that I'm going to put a circle uh, Penelope. what Hi. what about Penelope what about Penelope okay so we're going to put a circle and that's going to be the main body of the upper body of the dragon and so it's like the the chest cavity there and then back here I'm going to draw a second one I'll make that about mm, Two-thirds the size of the original one, okay? And then I'm going to put another one here. And make that about the same size as that one. We'll make that down like this, okay? Now, once we have those three circles, I'm going to draw a line from this circle back up around the back circle there and down to the third circle there. So really, this one should be one, two, three. This one's in the front, this one's behind, and that one's behind that one. Okay? So I'm done? You're starting with the nose, huh, Luna? I like to start with the nose, yeah. Yeah, okay, well. Or the eyes. All right, now down here in this sphere here, I'm going to draw another circle there, another sphere. Okay? And that's going to be where we're going to put the snout. And on top of this snorkel, up here, uh, snorkel? On top of this circle up here, I'm going to put two triangles. Now you're starting to see where we're getting, right? Now out here, on this side of this circle, we're going to draw an ellipse. And we're going to do another half ellipse here. Well, not even a half ellipse, a quarter of an ellipse there. Just so we know where the shoulders of the wolf are. And then from the back of this, we're going to draw Probably right to here. Kimberly and Camille. Like that. We're going to draw another. What would you say, huh? Uh, 
Maybe tomorrow we can do a dragon from Spirited Away. Oh, that'd be cool. I can't do the exact dragon from Spirited Away, but we can do something like that. I don't even, I have to think about what that looks like. Um, so now we're going to draw a long tube here. And on the other side, we'll draw a long tube there. So this one, these are the forearms of the dragon. And I want them both to kind of end I want mine in... to seem regal. So I'm going to have okay. it and, and powerful. So I'm going to have it have like no pupils or like... Okay. Regal means no pupils? No. But, or, or, no. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, we're going to draw down and then we're going to draw half circles for the feet here. Back here, remember that sphere we put there... We're going to draw back out here like this, and then we're going to draw the, the reverse knee of the wolf, and it's going to come down like so. And then we're going to draw the ankle and the toe back here, the, the feet back here. In fact, with this one, I forgot to put the ankles in. They should be here. That wolf just looks... What? Look at my wolf head. It's, round, it's kind of round, so we'll get we'll get to drawing how to draw the the round head and make it look more like a a wolf head. So right in this part here, I'm going to draw a line along like that, and then I'm going to bring the other leg in. And just all I need is that line. It and here I'll put cat, this cat line here. Ears, but that's the way I draw ears. The ears. Well, wolves have kind of triangular ears. But what do you what do you think of? I think don't think it looks like a cat. So now we're going to draw under that sphere. We're going to put a darker line just so we have it. Now, up here, I think this would be cool if this wolf dragon has, Queen Comet of the has horns. Not horns, but uh, <laughs> spines on its back up here. going to do that just to make it fun. And then from this line, we're going to draw down the line of the back and around like this. And what I like to do is draw around and we'll have his tail come up like this or her tail come up like that. And I think it's going to be standing on a tr like a rounded triangle, like a rock like that. Now, the next step is we need to get his wings in or her wings in, sorry. I keep saying his and so right about where the top of the leg meets that original circle that we drew, I'm going to draw up like this. And now I don't have a lot of room for wings, but that's okay because I kind of feel like these dragons don't need big wings because they're kind of smallish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the dragon wing come out. I'm going to curl it like this. I just think wings have to be like And I'm going to bring it down like that. Bigger than her subject like this. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So right about, if I draw a straight line across, right about here, I'm going to draw out and in and back, back out like this. So let those wings kind of curve back out. And then from the bottom of those wings, we'll go whoop, like that. And we'll go like this to meet the bottom of the wing there. Okay, now we can erase this extra line here, and we have the body of our dragon. What's up? Someone saying something? You can't see it because... We can do something uh, like the Spirited Away Dragons. We just can't do exactly the Spirited Away Dragons. Penelope said my mom could help you with that. She knows a lot about Spirited Away. So you just... She, she suggested... See, every time it's her turn to choose on family movie night. Oh, I love Spirited Away. It's a really good movie. Hi, Inkiro. How you doing? Beautiful movie, I think. Yeah, it's a really beautiful movie. We haven't seen it in a while. We should watch that again. Oh, maybe. In fact, that would be a really great movie night movie. So now let's get to the head. The head is going to be the hard one because wolves don't have, like, traditional dog heads. Like, they don't look like Snoopy. So what we're going to do is Snoopy. Snoopy. I said Snoopy. I said Snoopy? Well, maybe it's Snoopy then. <laughs> uh, so from... <laughs> Where we have Snoopy these ears here. Stupid, I guess. Hey, Snoopy's not stupid. Snoopy's awesome. I said Snoopy. 
Stoopy is stupid. Yes, yeah, Stoopy would be stupid. But Snoopy is awesome. I mean, you know, who else gets to ride around on the top of a airplane and fight the Red Baron, huh? So now nobody. what we're going That's right, nobody. Not anymore at least. So from here, from the point at the bottom of the ear it. Well they used to, back in World War Two. World War One they did. So here Who's the Red Baron? The Red Baron was a German uh pilot who flew airplanes in World War One and he was one of the most uh dangerous pilots out there. So Snoopy is kind of pretending to be a World War One pilot. So here we're gonna go from here out to there. You knew that? So you knew who the Red Baron was? Then why'd you ask? No. Okay. And then we're going to yeah, draw from here to, to there. Maybe that's a little too far out. So let's go in a little bit more like that. And then we're going to do the same kind of a line out here. But because it's on the opposite side, we don't have to get quite as much of an angle. And we'll bring it in like this. Okay? Now we're going to draw the snout of the wolf. So remember that circle that we drew here? We're going to use that as the basis of the back line of the wool of the of the snout where the snout the meets the head. Very, very agile. Bird. Okay. And then from here we're gonna draw out to the nose. Okay. It's almost like a it's gonna be these two lines are gonna get closer together as they get closer. And then we're gonna draw closer a triangle. As they, get as they get further along. Closer together as they get further along. Sorry. Jeez, you're so picky. And then we're going to draw out here, and we're going to kind of bring this one in a little closer. And we're going to draw around like this. I'm not picky at all, actually. You're the one who's picky. Well, you were just picking on me. That doesn't mean I'm picky. Well, you were just correcting me, so there. So now from here... You know what the definition of picky means, right? Is I'm going to draw... Picky means picking and choosing what they want. It also can mean someone who's picky at someone else. So there. So we're going to draw kind of an ellipse here and an ellipse there. All right? And those two ellipses aren't going to be the eyes. Those are just the, the eye sockets. And then from under here, we're going to draw a line that goes down and in like this. I'm going to do the same here, down and in. And this and that line... We can now jagged, make it jagged, so it looks like hair. And we can even, I think I'm even going to do this. I'm going to re-erase that, erase it, not re-erase. And I'm going to draw like this. Okay, now, now we've got the basics of our wolf head. Look at my wolf head. From here, yep, your wolf head looks good. I'm going to draw this straight down like this. I think that nose is a little too triangular, so I'm going to make it a little bit more. I'm going to bring it in a little like so. I'm going to make a cylinder. And then from the center of the nose, the top of the nose, we'll go like this. And those are the furrows. And that's how you know that the wolf is dangerous, because it's furrowing its teeth. I mean, it's furrowing its, its mouth like that. And so we can draw a couple of those furrows and then we'll draw in and around like this. So we'll go and we'll make the you know what I, I think you should do? Mouth lines. I well I mean the, the eye them lines. Fold their wings. Make them fold their wings? Okay. We can do that. Like this? So now Yep. That's kind of what he's doing. So now from here, where that ellipse meets the nose, the furrows there, we're gonna draw up around like that. We'll do that on both sides. And then from the point, from that point, we're going to go in a little bit. Oh, you turn, move my table. That's okay. And then we're going to go around like that. Yeah? Yeah? What happened? What? Oh, never mind. What's wrong? Still recording. And then we'll go like so. <laughs> yeah, it's just fine. There's no problems. We're going to draw like that. And then we're going to draw like that. And in here we can draw a circle and that's gonna be its eye. What are you doing to the computer, honey? And now we can get rid of most of these lines, but I wanna keep that there for the under part of his lines. What are you doing, Luna? It's, it, okay. Okay, I'm done, okay? You 
go ahead. Just try to understand what you're doing because I don't want you to mess with the, the thing because we've had enough problems with the recording. And we can put two more lines there to draw the dragon. I mean, the, the wolf's eyes. I mean, uh, furrows of his, of his brow. Now, let's get those ears in. I think those ears are a little small now. So let's make them a little bigger and have them come out like this. Do you think my ears are small? No, I think your ears are perfect. And like this. So it needs ears a level. That's why I know. No, your real ears are really small. <laughs> They're like too small. They're like too small for any human being. But the ears on your own are just fine. In fact, no, actually your ears are too big for your head. Hey. <laughs> Well, at least they're so, not like yours. Yeah, what's wrong with my ears? They're so here, too smelly. My ears are smelly. Uh-oh. Why are you smelling my ears? So I just no, made... No, I can just smell it from here. Oh, gross. I made sharp I triangles there. I'm and I'm going to come out here. Your voice is <laughs> not your voice. <laughs> my voice is smelly. I have a smelly voice. Maybe I have dragon breath like Camille's mom was talking about. No. And then we can put an eye in there because, like, wolves have very, very piercing yes. eyes. So we can do that for Smelly the eyes. Smelly ear. Smelly mouth. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Now, inside the ear shape, we don't have to do a lot of drawing in there. We can just kind of go in and out and in and out and make a few hair lines. And really, it's, they're just kind of like triangles that you just let go curvy. Dad, I'm not trying to smell yours, but yours And you go ears. like this. I'm not trying to smell your ears, but... The sink always filters through. Nice. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. You're so welcome. now here, we'll draw his forehead. And then we can, or her forehead, then we can draw a couple of zigzags there. You are hysterical. But looks are not everything. Let's now, let's up. get back to the mouth. So the mouth, let's, we're going to come, we're going to draw a line across here on the nose so that we know that this is the top of the nose this is the front of the nose, so we can shade this a little bit. And then we can draw straight down from there and then bring this around like so. And we can go around like this. <laughs> Sam like your skull PJs. Oh, you can see my skull PJs? <laughs> How can you see my skull PJs? Weird, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing my PJs Ooh, today. Uh, I didn't get... What's this line? Okay. This is Luna's so far. She's kind of following the same process a little differently. There you go. All right, now, uh, I'm going to put here, we're going to put a few fangs. Now, should we have the mouth open or closed? What do you think, Luna? Luna? A great artist does not need uh, somebody's... Well... I'm kind of getting your feedback. Thanks a lot, kid. A great artist doesn't need somebody's what? Somebody's uh, opinion. I don't? Okay. Well, all right. I was asking your opinion because I was thinking you were drawing along with me, but if you're going to be mean about it, forget I'm it. I'm not. You're not what? I'm not being mean about it. Well, you are. So I'm going to draw no, the bottom of the mouth there. I think it's going to have a mouth closed like that. And then we have the cheekbone. This is how there. the queen appears in tapestries, actually. Now, here we're going to draw back. Just draw a few little hairs. And then on these spines, we're going to draw hair going back like this. To make it look like the spines kind of come out of the hair. We'll have a spike there. These are the dragon spikes that the Ziburator has on his back. Can have it go up. And then we can throw some more hairs on the other side of those in between, like that. Now, let's get to let's get to the arm. So for the arm, see all this stuff in here? I'm gonna get rid of a lot of that. But I'm gonna keep the basic structure that I created. But I am gonna keep this line. And then have it go this way. And then I can have another line going that way to show that these are kind of squishing together. She has the, All right. like a tail of a dragon. Yep, that's what the Zbertor is supposed to have. 
So back up here, we're going to recreate this line here. And we're going to draw some hairs. And maybe we'll draw a spike, a dragon spike on its elbow. And then we'll bring some more hairs down here. But the hairs down here are really small, so you don't need to do a lot of shagginess. Like, you can be more shaggy up here, but when you get down to the legs, the leg hair is really kind of short. So we're going to just draw a little bit of kind of lines like this. Up here, it can be a little bit shaggier. And then down here, this is his chest, her chest. And you can go down like so and throw a few test, ch uh, chest thing. hair and then down like that. I don't know how I'm going to replicate this. Uh... I don't know either. Now we're going to redraw this. Remember, we have our ankle there, so we'll draw a little, like, we're almost like we're drawing a sphere there, and then we'll come down to the toes. And I think that it's going to have talons, so we're going to draw up to an ankle, I mean to a knuckle, and then pause. down like that. Why has opposable pause? So we'll come up, okay. Opposable pause? What does that mean? Like, uh, like this? They have opposable thumbs. They have opposable thumbs, yes. But they can also grab stuff with their paws. Right, so they have opposable thumbs on their paws. Okay, so there's the one foot. The wolf looks like a like sleep a what? deprived. The wolf looks sleep deprived. I think he's, he's just, mine is just angry. I don't know. So now we're going to draw up to the knuckle here. And we'll put another knuckle there and another knuckle there. And then we can draw circles. And then we can bring those down into claws like that. Well, that failed. What failed? Something. And then we can draw up here. Remember, this is the top pad of the, I mean, top of the hand there, or the top of the wrist or whatever there. So we can draw the claws in like that. I mean, if you don't want them to look sleep deprived, just go like this. Da da da, ta da! No more lines under the eyes. I don't think it needs lines under the eyes anyway. And probably also, if you made a little less shaggy, like right now, I think I made it too shaggy, and it looks a little bit ragged. So if you just make it a little less shaggy, it'll look less ragged. So take less of these. Hairlines. I just wanted to show you the options for hairlines, but I agree. It kind of looks like it's been beaten up, so I don't want it to look so beaten up. So I'm going to give it more like it's been taking care of itself. So I'll simplify these lines a little bit. The more you simplify these things, the more clean it's going to look and the less ragged it'll look. So the queen needs no help. Okay. The queen needs no help, apparently. So if we get rid of some of these extra hairs... Here, we can make it look simpler and look a little bit more, uh, more clean and sharp. So let's go. These hairs up here should be short anyway. So we'll go like that. And now it shouldn't look quite so sleep deprived. Because I agree, it was looking kind of sleep deprived. So now, uh, let's even make these shorter. See what happens is when you make them shorter, they look, it looks a lot more like it's got less ruffled fur. So, when you if you want something to look really ragged, you can make them really long and ragged. And then if you want something that looks much more clean and much more smooth and taken care of, you just draw them smaller. So now, back here, this is the back leg. I think I'm going to move that a little bit. I'm going to move it here. And then I want to draw a line. It's going to be kind of like an invisible line. From here, we're going to draw a line up and over here. It's going to be invisible because it goes behind this leg. And then we can get rid of that line there. But we're, it's just that's going to be the connection between the chest and this is the belly here, the belly line. And then we'll have the leg line come around over there. And this connects to this. And we can just shade those in. And we can also shade everything on that side of that line, that center line. And that way it looks like it's the back leg in behind. Now, let's get to this leg here. So this leg, we're going to throw the hip 
and the back leg to the knee, which is gonna come like so, and then to the ankle, and then down to the feet, which I'm gonna do the same thing I did over here. I'm gonna draw one, two, three, four. Oops, I should've put the fourth one here. Four knuckles, that's right, because dogs have four. Yeet. One, two, three, four, <laughs> and then we'll go one, two, three, four claws on that. And then we have this nice leg here. And I think on the back leg, since we put these these spines on the back of this Sorry, leg, I think I'll put some more that. spines here. Sorry you had to sit through that. That was horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. How dare you? So now we've got the back of this burrator here. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to have, remember we drew the wing there? We're going to have the skin of the wing come like this down to there so we can see its back still. Because otherwise we wouldn't see his back. And so if we see his back, we'll see more spines coming like so. And we'll continue the tail down like this. And I think at this point, the tail should look armored like a dragon tail. Like it's got scales on it. And maybe we could throw, let's, let's do the scales and we'll bring it around like so. We already have this line for the tail there and we'll just shade that in. So now we'll have scales back here and we can just make the scales look like triangles. So maybe we can make them look similar to the hair, hairs up here and we'll make it look like the hairs become scales. That's kind of a cool idea. Yeah? Yeah? You wanna see mine? Sure. Oh yeah, looking cool. Oh, it's very regal. So now, back this here, the queen of the we're going to draw scales going down, follow that tail, and we'll bring the tail. And what you do is you follow this line down, follow that line down, here, and you bring it line. over. Just move your hand across the paper, and then continue it here. Uh, we're not re I'm quite ready. I know, but... I was in the middle of explaining something. So here, there's Luna's. She's still not done with it, but it's looking really no, cool. Oh, you are. I like that it's it's kind of the uh, like an icon of her because there's the wings on both sides. So what I'm going to do is follow yeah, this line about around. Not the wings on both sides, but Penelope and like this. Go. Yeah, she's got to go. And we'll bring mm -hmm. this line around like this so we can get the tail on the other end here. What? Huh? Done. Okay, that's fine. But I'm like, what's wrong? We can maybe do Penelope's favorite thing to ask. No. Why not? Because I don't want to. We gonna end it early then? No, we'll just. I'm not done with it yet. So anyway, so back here, we're gonna draw the tail, the scale. If you want to go ahead, we'll draw the scales here. Any lunch? Oh, she's leaving us to go get lunch. I don't know. She needs to eat. I don't understand that. And then I think at the end here, because they're supposed to have a tail of fire. So I think back here we'll throw some curling fire like this. And what I do is I draw swirls and then reverse swirls. So swirl and then reverse swirl. And we can just keep that going around like that. And so back here, we'll have these spines disappear behind his tail. I mean, behind, by, yeah, behind the back side of the tail. And now we've got the wings. So with the wing, what we can do is we'll, let's draw that inside line on both sides. So we'll draw inside here to connect to the shoulder. And I think on this, we're going to make it come, we're going to put some, if not scale, some sort of dragony, scaly thing. Because it's got to protect the bones of the wing there. So I'm just going to draw that going up. And we can go up like this. Like so. 
And you can go as far as you want with that. I'm going to take them all the way up to the top. And then I'll put a hook there. And we'll bring a hook like that. And now we have to draw the side of the back of the wings or the, the so the wing will have this is the solid structure of the wing. It's usually like a finger on a bat wing. So we'll have that come out like this. And so you can have it come to a point and then come to another point. Not to a point, but a, to a, a joint. And then we can bring it down to a point down here. You can do the same with this. So you can bring it from here to a joint, to a second joint, And then down to the point back down here. And then we're going to draw a second one in here, to, down to a joint here. So the wings are kind of folded up. And then to the second joint here. And then down to a point here. And we'll do that here too. We'll bring it down. The first joint, second joint, and then to a point, but I think that point is gonna go behind the flames back here. And so now what we can do is we can put a third one, I think. But this one's gonna be hiding behind there. So we're gonna to go to a joint, second joint, and third joint will be like that. And we'll do that here too. Joint, second joint, third joint here. And so now we can connect these. We go up and down and up and down. And that makes it look like the bat wing is kind of folded up. We can bring it in and around like that. And we'll do the same on this side. We go up. And remember, if something goes behind something else, it's okay to have it overlap. So you go, goes there behind and then comes. And that way the ear looks like it's in front. And we can go up and down to this point. Let's say that point is there and then up and down to that point. And now we have a pretty massive, cool looking dragon. So now you can do some neat things to this. Like you can, uh, you can put designs on the horns on the back. Like I'm going to put an S shape on it. That kind of makes it just look like it's going, that it has a pattern on it. And then I can draw, on the wings, we can draw textures. And again, I just kind of draw a, a simple pattern, like a simple shape like this. And it's just something that to make it look like there's a texture on it. It doesn't have to be anything big. So like right now, all these are just kind of swirl, like not swirls, but curved lines. And I can do the same over here. We'll just go in. And if you want to go along with that shape, that actually helps. So if you go along with the bottom shape, so like this. And then I flatten it out as I get closer to the top or not, or I can get even more intense with it. And then here, and what I notice what I'm doing is I'm trying to have, for every line we have in one segment, we have a similar line in the next segment. Okay, and now let's get to some shading in here because we did a little bit of it. So we want to darken in that back leg. So we know it's there, but it doesn't like take too much information away from the character. And then we need to draw where his, so we've got his shoulder here, but we need to show where his belly goes in front of this back leg. So we'll just draw a line like that. And you can make it shaggy if you want, like so. Um, and then you can reinforce some of the lines on the front things here. 
things that go in front. And I would say because this leg back here is in shadow, it probably wouldn't, and actually let's make his whole belly in shadow so we can hide this whole thing. That way it doesn't interfere. So we see that. Sometimes it's good to put things into shadow if they're in the background anyway. And then here, I'll just shade this arm here so that the head comes forward. A lot of times I do shading to basically make things come out of the darkness. So I like these tufts of hair here, so I don't want them, them to necessarily disappear. But what I will do is I'll darken under the leg here. And I'll just make a shape of shadow and I'll follow the shadow, the shape of these hairs onto the back of the belly. And I'll do one here too. Like so. And then under the, the talons, we'll draw shadows. And I always bring the shadows from the tip out. So you go out like that. And that kind of shows that the form that you're drawing above it is getting thinner and going, getting thicker at the back. So it goes from thin to thick, just like the toe would. And then I'm going to put a tooth there just because I think it'd be cool if they have two teeth sticking out. And so that's what we've got so far. And now we've got this rock that it's standing on. I think it'd be fun to draw a little bit on the rock. So let's Let's draw a line kind of parallel to this one, but a little bit lower. And we'll go down like this. You can make up whatever shape you want there. But what's going to be nice about that shape is what it does is you just have to shade this in. And it just gives depth to the rock that this Burator is standing on. And then with the flaming of the, of the tail, you can make the tail go dark so that you know that the flame is on fire. So if you make it like go dark, then the flame looks like it's brighter. And we can throw maybe, oh, there's, there's some grass down here. And grass is just marks I make by pushing my pencil down really hard and then drawing and lifting it as I go. So you start really hard and push down and then you pull up as you draw and you'll get these kind of pointy lines. And let's see, do we need clouds in the background or a moon, maybe a moon in the background? So I think uh, right about here, I'm gonna draw because wolves and moons seem to go together. I'm gonna draw a circle, but only part of the circle around like this. And that'll be our moon in the sky. And if it goes that big, let's see, if I continue it down, it'll go here as well. Uh, not that far, like here. You just have to make sure that when you're drawing it, just draw around like this. Pretend like you're drawing it through the wing and then continue the drawing around like this. And you'll be able to get that circle shape. And so if that's the moon, then the sky has to get dark. So let's darken the sky around the moon. Now we don't want to get as dark as the leg there, so what we'll do is we'll leave a white line between the back leg and we'll let this go dark, just kind of like we did yesterday with the space. We're going to draw this going dark all the way down to the ground. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're drawing things like this, always fill in all the little white spots. So if there's little white spots like that, try to fill those in so they don't show up. And I like to try to keep the lines going in the same direction about so that as I'm drawing them, they don't... Because if I do start doing lines the other direction, they're going to start getting darker. So I make sure everything stays in the same direction. 
And it also kind of lends a sense of simple uniformity to the piece and makes it look a little cleaner. So if all these lines are kind of in the same general direction, I can make it look more neat. And so I'll bring those lines through here and make sure I'm not going to color in the fire on the tail at all. And I'll darken the areas around the fire here. And I don't think we need a frame for this one. I think just having the black shape of the sky, but let's make it into a shape rather than just letting it go into nothingness. Let's make it a shape. Let's have it go out like this and we'll draw kind of a random frame. Not quite a, a square, but we'll just make it look like it's a solid enough shape that we can draw the drawing into it. So it goes out here, and then we'll finish this across, make sure it's still going straight across, and then we'll continue it across like this to right about here. And then we can bring it down. And I always like breaking breaking the edge of my boxes. That's just the way I am. I like breaking edges. So if you leave, if you feel like your lines are getting a little crazy, you can always erase them into the box that you want. So I'm gonna race down, I'm gonna race across, and maybe race up a little bit here. There, so that matches on the both sides. And we'll do it down to here. And we'll go up to here and across like this. And now we can get rid of any extra stray lines that we don't like. And you should have a pretty decent looking Zaburator. Well, we did, I think we did a manticore before. Well, I did it in, mon in advanced monster art school. I did a manticore. A kelpie. I'm not sure what a kelpie is. I'll have to look that up. What's really neat about doing monster art school is I'm learning about all these monsters from all over the world. So I didn't even know about his burrator until we started doing the research in it. So it's kind of fun to find out about these different stories. So now, a couple other things I'm going to do is I'm gonna, from here, I'm gonna draw in to there, to right into this side of this uh, bone in the wing, and I'm gonna draw a shadow in there. And then I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna fill that in dark between these two bones, and then I'm gonna do the same kind of thing here. I'm gonna kind of follow that same, pat, that same move across up and fill that in. That way it looks like the wing has a bit of shadow on it. So it's a three-dimensional object. Three-dimensional objects create shadows. Two-dimensional objects don't. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go right to that knuckle over there. And I'm going to shade this in dark. And then here we'll do another shadow, kind of following that same movement around. Actually, I may as well just do that. And then in this one, I'll do the same thing. I'll just kind of cast a shadow. And basically following the same movement from here, we'll go along like that to that next knuckle. Like so. And that should give us enough depth to make it feel like it's three-dimensional. Now if you want to go in and kind of reinforce any lines, like I'll make these lines a little darker so that the head comes a little fur forward, further forward so we don't get confused between what's in the background and what's in the foreground. So I'll make this line heavier. And what's fun about making those lines heavier is it really brings what you're looking for up closer. And so the darker you make things, the more they come forward. So if I really want that note, the eyes, to come forward, I'll make these dark areas around the eyes really dark and maybe I'll make the darkness on the nose really dark and that way it'll come farther forward. So as you can see, like, as I do this with these lines, I can make these things have a nice, sharp closeness to us. 
All right. A seahorse. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've, 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 I knew. I, okay, that's what a kelpie is. Yeah. Okay. I kind of. I guess I knew that. Then I was wondering if that's. Is it also known as a water horse? <laughs> um. Yeah, we could do that in another week, but we're not doing. Oh wait, you know what? This area in here needs to be shaded in. So just like I shaded in the sky here, this is sky as well. So I'm going to shade that in. I'm going to shade this in. And I'm going to shade this in. And this and these. And in through in here too as well. Make sure you're pretty consistent with how you push down on the pencil so you don't get areas that are much darker than others unless you want it because that's the way to do it is if you're if you're looking to make something heavier and darker just push down on your pencil a little f harder and you'll make darker lines and then if you're really light about it you can make a consistent line like I was doing here that's about the same weight but you really have to control real same heaviness you really have to control your hand and make sure that you're drawing at the same pressure. You're putting the same amount of pressure going all the way through. And that way you can maintain that pressure throughout and get what I call like a wash of color or a wash of tone as opposed to uh, getting something that looks all marky. And now down here, I'm just going to darken this a little bit. So I think that's a pretty good... It's a pretty good uh, Ziburator. What do you guys think? You having fun today? This is a really fun one. I'm, I'm not too done with this. I'm maybe going to finish that out a little. So I like it being a little bit more clean. And when I say clean, I mean have the edge be more sharp. So when I say clean, that's what I mean. It's like sharp edge. Literally an edge that looks like it's been cleaned up with an eraser or something. And you can reinforce these lines out here so they look a little bit more hard-edged. And there. So I think that is a done deal. And so the last thing I have to do is sign my name to it. And I always put the exclamation point because I had fun drawing. So I hope you guys all had fun. Uh, remember, try to do, try to share these with your friends because we can get more people to watch because I want to share it out with as many people as possible. Um, and uh, I'm going to have these up on YouTube as well. And so when they go on YouTube, if you guys want to subscribe to YouTube, and I think next week I'm going to have us, I'm going to be putting these out through a Monster Art School Facebook page that I've just started. And if you guys get to the Monster Art School Facebook page. You can click on it and see if like you can join it yet. I'm not sure because I don't know how to do this stuff. Too much technology for me. Um, but anyway, um, some of my wife set up for me and she said, you know what, you should do that. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll do that. Um, I think the idea is that I can reach more people that way. So anyway, um, I hope you're having, you're doing okay in quarantine and everything's doing okay for you. And uh, uh, take care and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Ah, it's not finishing.